Hello. Hi. I'm Patricia McNeely. I'm in a Lumens Blu-ray Twin Flame from Chicago, Illinois. I am in Chicago, Illinois. I'm just saying that because sometimes people, I might just say that too fast and people aren't catching it. How are you? So today in this video, I want to talk to you about how these lunar cycles, the moon energy as we call it, full moon, new moon, and at the same time your life is going, and you're going, what's going on with me? So this is affecting a lot of the men. And men are tired big time. Uh, you may not see it around you, and there's certainly a lot that men do with their male bodies in order to keep pushing through things. And yet, what's going to happen is that there are things that, you know, the old toys, the old go-to things, the old coping things, they're just not going to be there. Um, the universe is gradually moving, taking the toys off of the fabric here and taking it off of the blankie so that people actually have to focus and pay attention to what's going on with them. What are some of those things? Smoke, smoking, um, it's going to be carousing, it's going to be the wandering eyes, it's going to be a lot of things. Now, men are not the only people that do this. I don't mean to single people out. It happens on both sides. And certainly for twin flame couples, how it plays out as a twin flame is that if your masculine is tired, you're tired. Sometimes you are tired beyond tired. And you'll keep going. You'll keep, you know, getting up. But you're wondering what is happening with this and what's going on. So... You're coming into a whole new set of lunar cycles of energy that are going to carry you through till the end of the year. And it's, it's going to be a bit odd for people. It's going to be surges and it's going to feel like flood energy comes in and recedes. And it's just sort of exhausting. Have you ever been out in the ocean and feel like you're getting pulled by some kind of an undertow that's kind of what some of this energy is and yet if you keep swimming against it it just tuckers you out you get so tired that you really won't know but this is a very odd tiredness a very odd sense of ennui tedium and the things that you do the next thing I want to talk to you about is with all of this up and down energy, is your courtship over? And you might say, what courtship? Well, the courtship you've been trying to have. Um, are you done courting each other? Are you exhausted with it all? Do you even know what to do next? It's really time to let the angel part of you take over. And if you don't know what I mean, it's time to come see me. It's time to reach out, have a proper session, learn to get some of this stuff opened on yourself because this isn't happening by itself. There are some things that do happen and yet there's an awful lot of participation that's required, especially when it comes to getting you up and running and getting out of old things, old patterns, old ancestries. What about your courtship though? So that's a really old-fashioned word to use for some of this. Has your twin been courting you? Have you been courting your twin? Or are you flopping into a lot of those old 3D dynamics? Whoops, they blocked me. Whoops, they ghosted me. Whoops, whoops, whoops. And you're kind of scratching your head and saying, you know what, I think all this twin flame stuff, this might be a load of bunk. I'm going to turn my back on it. You could turn your back on all that 3D stuff for sure. I don't care about that. But what I will tell you is the body, the body keeps you going. And that's where it's really throwing people off is because they're saying things like, well, my twin is unconsciously or subconsciously doing this or that. And that may be true to a certain extent, but the bottom line is you have your body, your twin flame has their body. 
If your man or woman is dealing with certain things through their body, you're going to feel it, but there's times that you hold steady for them, and there's times that they've been holding steady for you. For a lot of you, your twin flame has been holding steady, albeit we might call that slightly sleepy, sleepy, grumpy, weepy, who knows which dwarf they are. But if they're sleepy, they're not going to be asleep for long. You actually do um, connect in ways that you spark life within each other. The more you turn your back on this particular thing that you're here for, which is the integration of your new body template, the more that you're going to flounder in this. So I suggest that you don't flounder. Get going with some things. Get going with the new things that are actually twin flame specific, which I have. Why? Because when you don't, it brings up a sense that somehow you've been neglected. You're suffering from neglect. Maybe you feel like you've suffered from neglect for years. Even the universe is neglecting you. But you have some say-so in this, and you're not really here to just be bulldozed. You have say-so. You have gumption. You have confidence. You have a heart. And you have courage. And that's not just a line from The Wizard of Oz. It's actually who you really are. We're not just pinning a heart on you and saying you have courage. You have a huge heart connection. So... What other things do come up? Resentments, resentments of the past, feeling cold. A lot of those relationship game playing. Oh, you know, they're being cold to me. Oh, my twin is punishing me. Oh, my twin is withholding or pretending or something like that. The angelic side of your twin, there is no such pretense. And so that's a misconcept that somehow that... You can't access it. You're just looking in the wrong direction. You're looking at a closed door or you're looking at the closure of karmic and ancestral patterns. It's important to let those things close, but it's also important not to become embittered, discouraged, or resentful about this. To somehow find some gratitude in the fact that, hey, Maybe you're dodging certain things. Maybe you're actually dodging a bullet. Maybe you're not here for a certain level of abuse again. Abuse or neglect or just patterns like you might have grown up with. Are you dealing with ascension symptoms? You'll feel these through your body. So I'm going to enumerate some of them. Are you feeling hot and cold energies? Do you feel as though you've gotten chills, especially if you live in the Northern Hemisphere? You can feel a lot of cold energy. What's that about? Well, in part, it has to do with the changing of the season. But there's a lot more to it than you might realize. Are you experiencing grief? Do you feel waves of sadness that just make you weep? Yes, that's common because we're closing the doors to Pluto energy, Venus energy, Mars energy, and it's important that we do so because that's where a lot of trouble began and was brought through. And whether or not people actually believe that these are planetary influences, they have been for some people, and some people have a recollection of it. Some people don't, and yet their body will still push out that grief. So whether or not someone actually believes it with their head, the body will still want this stuff to get pushed out. And you'll still express it somehow. And you don't have to be afraid of these emotions. You are, after all, feeling people. You have to be able to feel. Don't be afraid of what you feel. Don't be afraid of your emotions. Don't be afraid of, you know, what other people think of, of your emotions. Because that's the thing, too, that, that needs to be gotten rid of. If people are going to cringe if you're angry, or do you cringe if someone else is angry? What kind of pattern of relationship is that? That's not a healthy one. I can tell you that. 
And yet some of the stuff is a bit cringe. It makes people go, oh God, I can feel it coming. Oh, when is it going to end? I just feel a bit squeamish. I feel just exhausted with it all. Who else is just tired of hearing about running and chasing? And it's really becoming passe. It's almost like, oh yeah, oh, that's so 2014. Okay, it might be very real for some people still. But for some people who are going into this next section here, it might feel that way. And that's a good thing if it feels that way. If you just feel like you're done chasing your tail, be done chasing your tail. And focus where you need to focus. The new template. Are you feeling like there's been some kind of a crash or a breakdown? That's very common. And people see it all the time. Now, in men, it plays out in specific ways. Men will tend to feel depression, anger. They'll feel it as a spiritual breakdown. They will feel it as a midlife crisis. They can experience a health crisis of some kind. Sometimes it's minor, like finding out that they have a little bit of high cholesterol starting up and they go, oh my God, Ugh, high cholesterol. That then means... My grandfather, who then had a series of mini strokes and went into some like weird illness that nobody knew what it was at the time. Okay. And it becomes something of a cause celebrate in the sense that it can now be addressed, but it will only be smoothed out by the integration of the light body. So how do you know some of these things? You know by how it feels. Okay, if it feels like it's out of your normal, it's um, not your normal range, you're sensing that even though people talk about going through it, some part of you is saying, hey, this isn't my normal, and I think this is either a stage or a phase. Yes, it is a phase of detoxification of the past. It's not a required phase, but on the other hand, almost everyone has something that they've grieved, whether in this life or past life. Everyone has had some sort of a breakdown of some kind. And I've been seeing this uh, actually around me in my neighborhood. I recently had someone report to me that they wanted to ask someone out, and that person really wasn't feeling it. And no matter how they persisted, they went ahead and blocked them on Instagram. And as this was reported to me, there was complete and utter shock. Why would this person block me on Instagram? I mean, after all, I did nothing wrong. I felt we had things in common. But if the other person isn't feeling it, they're just not feeling it. And there's reasons for that. And it sometimes does have to do with maturity levels. And sometimes it has to do with there's not actually a connection there. There's not something that's supposed to connect. Or the universe is saying, hey, hang on a minute. There's really something better because you'll be dodging a bullet with this one if you persist. And so the other person did have a bit of a breakdown. And what happened with that was, you know, they did a lot of self-questioning. Self-judgment. The judgment was like, what's wrong with me? Why am I not worthy? Why with my accomplishments am I turned away? Why can't I get through the starting gate? Why do I need to get gut kicked again? And the answer to all of this is, it may not just be the time, the person, or the place. There are timings to things, and when it flows, it flows. And by the way, both these people were 15 years old in high school. So just imagine if we carry this over and you have years of this type of thing that happens to people, what happens to men? Do they crash and burn as a teen, and then somehow that flavors their adult life and their relationships with their romantic relationships. Maybe they flop into something that just says, you know what, 
I'm used to getting burned. I'll just, you know, really not get invested here. And then you have people that really just somehow can't commit because they're afraid. Okay. Sometimes it is that simple. You have women. Same thing happens to women. Okay. Especially women who can't do the asking. Or the asking out or something like that. And then just at the time someone gets up their courage, they get blocked or they get rejected or something like that. So these lunar cycles of energy is intended to help loosen this stuff so that people will be able to detach, to be able to get rid of their toxic emotions. And yeah, this builds up in a sense inside the body. People hold this stuff. People have, you know, let it build up for many, many times until it almost feels like that in itself is the block. And it's not that you are intended to be blocked in love. It's intended that you remove so that you can feel how great this love is. You didn't feel this love to begin with so that you could go, ta-da, I'm off on a mission. I, I'm, I'm just going to like forget the heart, hearts and cards and flowers because that's what everybody says. No, some part of you might be denying yourself because you see disappointment. I think there's a disservice done out in the community when too much bad press gets reported about what the masculine is doing or what he isn't doing and the comments where people, you know, want to be long suffering and are taking on the mantle of, you know, I'm sorry, it's just too tiring already. It's too boring already. It's just too boring already. And it's time to get this jump started so that you can really feel again what this is about. This is about love. This is about the return of your love for many lifetimes. And you've already been in lives together, but you know, it's like going along and like, boom, something, something was the straw that broke the camel's back, which is why you ended up here on earth to really get this and receive the brand new template. Don't believe it. Take a look around and see all the stuff that's breaking down. We're not here to perpetuate it. We're here to shift it, refine it. Love it back into something that is viable. And first and foremost, this starts with you. How does a proper courtship operate? A proper courtship means that you're tuned into each other and that any of the emotions that you feel, the fears that you feel, the fears that have been presented by other people can actually be cleared away by a twin flame healer so that you can be free of these things. Some things really go deep. They go way back into your personal history. Some of the most adventurous people, some of the people who have been the helpers, some of the people who've been the between life angels, some, that's some of you. You're like people helping out after the Titanic and other people are climbing on your shoulders just so they can breathe. They pull you down and you're going like this. Oh, I can't breathe. All these people are grabbing at my energy. They're trying to pull me back in. They're trying to pull me down, pull me backwards. Well, that's not love either. Okay. And giving and giving and giving until it hurts. That's not love either. And so... How do you stop these things from building up and festering again or making either of you sick or worse, making you go seek something? Everyone wants a new real life. How many of you out there want your real life, want your real life to show up? And you're tired of looking at others and saying, but they're doing this, but they're doing that. Or I have family and friends around me. I'm, you know, I'm tired you want your real life. You're supposed to want your real life. You are supposed to desire the things back that belong to you. The true things that someone, whether they're handing it to you right up close and personal, or you receive it during a session with me, they belong to you. 
And so there's a few things I have that will help you with this. One of them is my live class on the weekend here in Chicago, 26th and 27th. We'll be focusing on these things and my causal body session. The causal body session is something that is very, very helpful in these energies, particularly in the lunar cycles. I have a special number here for you for that, 144. What else is helpful for you? Well, I have numerous webinars on my store at TwinFlameBody.com and my book, Twin Flame Ascension and Inner Healing. This is very, very good because I go over the things that are having you deal with ascension symptoms and what they are. Twin Flame Ascension is different. Once you reach past a certain point, it becomes very different and it becomes very baffling. You could be scratching your head saying, well, now what's going on? I have things outlined in here that are very helpful for this next cycle of energy. And not only that, it helps you to help your other half, wherever they may be. Whether they're in the same house, or whether they're on the next block, or whether they're a few miles away. It helps you to help your other half. Everything positive that you do gets reflected to your true other half. It's always that way. Your love hits the intended target. It hits the mark. It always will. That's what vibrational levels of ascension do for you. So if you would like to um, have a session with me, look down below in the, in the description and click the links or reach out to me with an email at twinflamesmerge at gmail.com. There's a lot of things to cover in your body, and I have quite a bit of information regarding that. If you need specific help, reach out to me, and I will make a suggestion for you or just set something up. The link goes straight to my calendar. Or come and join the class. We always have a great time. It is at the North Shore Healing Center on the northwest side of Chicago, and you'll meet other people. You'll meet other twin flames on the journey. Many times when I've had a class, people have made a good friend that they can just talk twin flame stuff to. That isn't in a forum. That isn't in like a big online group or something. It's a real friendship where you can go have coffee with someone or you can have a group where everyone's pretty much there to learn and help and be. Be who you came here to be. And... I'm glad you came. The universe will never be the same. And that's from a song. I was inspired by it. It's, it's um, a song. I'm glad you came. You probably heard the song, but it came out in 2011. 2011 till now. When I pick up songs that they came out, that means we're putting some closure to some pretty long ago stuff. So come and get yourself up and running. Reach out. Have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.